So today is the, I guess the second last day of Olympics. The Olympics will be all over tomorrow. So the Olympics will be over tomorrow. The crowds will go home. People will go back to their own countries. But the situation in Tibet is getting worse. It's getting worse day by day. In 2001, when the IOC awarded the the Olympic Games to China, China had made many promises about improving human rights, about freedom, about freedom of media, but China completely violated all these promises and the repression and the, and the torture in Tibet continues. The world sent around 10,000 athletes, around 10,000 athletes to China to participate in the Olympic Games, 10,000 athletes. But it not only sent those athletes, it sent something else also. And this, this I think is important. What it sent to China is surveillance technology. And I looked, looked about what it, what it is about. Surveillance technology worth 12 billion dollars. 12 billion dollars of surveillance technology. That's, that's not a small amount. That is a huge amount. Let's, let's, take this, let's take this amount into perspective. In 2002, uh, Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. 2002 Winter Olympics would be about five months after, just five months after 9-11, uh, September 11 attack. Just five months and they spent 315 million, only 315 million. This is less than 3% of what China spent, 12 billion. Two years ahead, 2004, Athens, Greece. The Greek government spent 1.5 billion dollars on surveillance. What is that? Again, another 12 percent, 3 percent, 13 percent of what China has spent. 12 billion dollars. What does this mean now? 12 billion dollars of surveillance technology. Technology that the government will use to keep tab on its people. This, this technology includes invisibly copying computer hard drives reading encrypted text, uh, facial recognition analysis on the surveillance videos. So if you have videos, they can take this facial recognition analysis using these technologies. These, these are not small toys. These are highly sophisticated devices and equipments that China has purchased. And it's not going away with the Olympics. It's not going away. These equipments, these surveillance technologies are there to stay in China and Tibet. And that, that I think is the sad irony. Because, the, because when IOC awarded the games to China, China promised human rights, improving human rights, freedom, freedom of media. But what this technology, this technology actually got into China under the banner of the Olympic Games. Security of the athletes and VIPs. So because of that, this surveillance technology went into China. And that is the irony. Because of this technology, they will be able to use, they, they will be able to control more over its people and over Tibetans. It, it is a very sad irony. The situation in Tibet, as I've said, is, is very tense. There is a, a climate of fear in Tibet. As I said before, a lot more military, a lot more security personnel, a lot more new construction of uh, uh, military barracks, which means that the military is there to stay permanently, permanently. Actually, human rights um, activists have said that after the Olympics, there will be more reprisals. The, the Tibetans will suffer more. Um, in the end, I want to say that this this Olympics 
many have referred to as a coming out party to the, um, to the Chinese government. But no matter how spectacular the opening ceremony may have been as has been reported in news and media and everywhere, no matter how high the skyscrapers in Shanghai may be, no matter how fast the trains may be with the maglev technology or whatever in China, I think the Chinese government has lost all its credibility in the international scene and its image of and its image of a rising of a of a responsible rising power is completely tarnished. So the Olympics, as I said before, will be over. The flame of the torch will be put out tomorrow. But I know that the flame of the Tibetan freedom struggle will keep on burning and Tibetan freedom struggle will continue. Thank you. See you later,